Come on, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Mackis. You better get your A game on. Yeah, because right. we're because we're already recording. So ha <laughs> ha. All right, good stuff. I, I got you. David, what's up, man? How are you? Stuart, how are you, sir? I'm doing good. Scotty Mack. Hello, sir. How are you? Pretty good. Thanks. Thanks so much for setting this up. Yeah, man. Well, uh, for everyone listening in, this is Filling the Storehouse podcast, mm-hmm. and uh, um, we have a good buddy of mine, Scott Mackis, on today. Um, he is a fellow graduate of the best college out there. And, college. Uh, <laughs> We're starting to show off with jokes, talking about the college that we went to. Anyway, sorry, go ahead, Stu. What, what would you say it is? I mean, I would agree that it is the finest government institution that the world has ever created, but it's not a college. Like college implies like we were there like having fun and you know That's hanging fair. out and having drinking beers. Well, some of us were and we got 60 days restriction, 100 demerits and a, a black end for it. But most of us did not of, do that. A bunch of troublemakers only, are the only ones that do that kind of stuff. That's right. Yep. Scott, what's up, man? How are you? Good to see you. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to connect here on, on Zoom. Uh, and uh, I love seeing the updates that you guys post on LinkedIn with the, the interviews and the, the real estate business that you build. And, um, you know, it's uh, you, you've come a long way over the years and uh, it's exciting to see all the, all the success. Yeah, man. You well, guys are having same with you, dude, and, and we're going to get into it today. Um, but uh, so for those that don't know Scott, um, he is uh, what are, the CEO, the owner, the, you know, the, the, the big cheese of uh, the uh, SABM, the Service Academy Business Mastermind. And um, Scott, I remember when I was up in Newport, Rhode Island, going to COXO school, and uh, I came over to your house and we were just like sitting on the, the back patio and then having, having some beers over your fire pit. Like we were just kind of like, you're kind of spitting ideas at me and we were kind of going back and forth about this whole SABM thing. And you had just started it and you had just kind of started doing some kind of just, you know, academy kind of like meetup calls. And man, what, what was that like four years ago? Yeah, three or four years ago. And, and, um, and now I don't live there anymore. You don't live there anymore. <laughs> and you're not in Newport anymore. So a lot has changed since then. Yeah, dude. Well, so um, for, for our audience, tell, tell um, us like a little bit about who you are and, and your background, and then, and then we'll kind of get into the, the story of SABM. Sure, sure. And I think you know, probably a lot of veterans and academy grads probably, you know, listen to your, your podcast. Um, so, you know, as, as it relates to my you know, military experience, I went to the Naval Academy, graduated in, in 2001, and uh, pretty close to you, Stu, and I know we were in the, the same company and played baseball together for a couple of years. Yep. Um, surface warfare officer after uh, graduation for five years, and then, and then uh, went to business school at night as I was transitioning out of the Navy, and um, kind of found like my passion for entrepreneurship, but like, I never, I mean, I always played sports growing up, so I didn't, uh, I didn't know much about business. Um, you know, obviously, you know, you know, having, having been in the military for five years, there's not too many business classes they teach at the Naval Academy. So, um, so that kind of lit the spark for me. And then, um, wasn't really quite sure where to start. So just got a job and, uh, worked in the construction industry for about 12 years. Um, and, uh, kind of halfway through, uh, you know, the corporate, corporate life of those 12, 12, I'd say five or six years into it, um, decided, Hey, you know, I wanted to, uh, start a business and, and, um, tried a number of different things through a bunch of stuff at the wall to see, see what, what would stick. Um, not much did at the beginning, you know, um, but I, I kind of knew all along I, I wanted to just help people you know, and help people, you know, I, I did like coaching and all just stuff I can do in my spare time, uh, just to make new connections outside of, you know, the, the day job and just build something that would be valuable for people. So, um, along the way, kind of figured one thing out, um, I, uh, I launched an online store called strengthsmugs.com 
and uh, and where we sell products related to Gallup's Strengths Finder assessment. So so I had taken the Strengths Finder. Uh, I love it as a, a personal development tool or a team building tool. I think today almost 25 million people have taken the Strengths Finder, and so um, so I, I went through their coaching certification process. You know, I think back in 2014, took a week off of work and just wanted to do something different. And, uh, and then kind of really enjoyed that experience. And then, um, and then created an online shop selling coffee mugs, basically strengths, coffee mugs with people's top five strengths. So they take the assessment, they'd buy the mugs. And then, uh, and then, so that was kind of like my first win, you know? So I was sell, I, I launched this, the shop on a Friday afternoon, probably about this time. So it was like four o'clock in the afternoon on a Friday, right before I was about to leave work. Nice. And then I had a, my first order within like five minutes and uh, got a bunch of orders over the weekend and um, thought, Hey, it's pretty cool to like get email money, you know, and I didn't have to do like any of the printing or any, any of the work really just you took the orders, sent them over to the print shop. They, they uh, shipped them out to the customers. Um, and, and so that's kind of, was kind of my first business when I guess kind of the hustle, um, that I started about four or five years ago, but from that experience, you know, I saw the need that I had, you know, as, you know, somebody that went to a service academy or somebody that was in the military, um, that was now out and, you know, starting a business, I was like, man, like, wouldn't it be cool if there was a community of like-minded people that, you know, were, were much more successful than me that I could learn from and connect with. And, and so that's where the idea of, of SABM, the Service Academy Business Mastermind started. It was really just a need that I had for myself to want to learn, grow, you know, take what I was doing to the next level. And, um, and so, yeah, launched SABM Group in 2017 and, uh, and haven't looked back. And so now I do it full time and and um, and and uh, and it's it's been a lot of fun. That's incredible, man. It seems to me that there's a um, you know a couple of themes that kind of ring through. But first, I want to make one. I want to get one thing like a point of clarification. I think we ought to discuss uh, Stewart and one thing that I'm very curious about. Was he any good at baseball? Like for real? Because what I my understanding is that literally when his broken face, that was because he couldn't catch the ball, <laughs> hit him in the face. And that just was the start of the down, you know, the, the, the downward spiral. And I, I just I, would like confirmation from you. Yeah. It was, Stu was an all-star man. Like Stu was uh, second base, you know, he was the perfect second baseman. So, I mean, like what, what, what depth though, like second base, like fourth string, <laughs> fifth string, like where was he at? I had to beg that the was coach. Like, I don't even remember anymore. What's that? I had to beg the coach just to keep me on the team so I wouldn't have to go do like plebe, you know, plebe stuff. And anybody that played baseball on that team for even six months, you know, they deserve a lot of credit. We, uh, <laughs> we, uh, we went through the ringer. Um, and Stu knows what I'm, I'm talking about. So yeah, uh, it was uh, an interesting experience. But we, I met a lot of great people, a lot of people of which I, I still talk with today and, and Stu's one of them and um you know those relationships last forever so. no it's awesome I, having played you know football there and being very deep in the depth chart as well uh uh incredible relationships and and one thing you know back to the some of the things that you said so it seems like you uh, and I don't know the answer to this but it seems like you're very passionate about uh self-awareness you know, and, and doing things that are not only building yourself with SABM, I mean, the original intent behind it, uh, it seems to surround yourself with folks, but also the strengths finder, it's a very unique, very niche, like thing. And, and it, it, it just seems to me that you're, and I may be completely off, but it seems to me you're very passionate about that self-awareness piece and understanding. And, and I'm just kind of curious, is that is that true and, and why what's what's uh, what's behind that yeah so i think um you know as we we uh we we move forward in life and get older you know it's 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 really important i mean i think we just naturally become more self-aware and you know we can we, you can become more self-aware 
you know, going through the school of the hard knocks, right? Try, you know, like trying something out, failing, trying something else out, failing, you know, trying something else out, having some success and then learning really kind of what you're good at or what you're not good at uh, that way. Um, as it relates to the strengths finder assessment, um, when I took it, I want to say it was like 2009 or 2010. I mean, I took it at kind of a low place, like in my, my uh, corporate career. I mean, I was like showing up to work every day. I was, <laughs> I was doing like everything I could um, to try to like, just be a part of like an, an entrepreneurial community, like listening to podcasts on the way to work, like listening to like Jim Rohn CDs and like, like whatever I could do to kind of like transcend like where I was at to like, to try to get to the next level. And so, so part of that exploration process was taking the strengths finder and when I took it, it like, it nailed me. I mean, it was, I think it's 177 or so questions. So it's pretty in depth. And uh, what Gallup has done is created this whole language of the talents. And so um, there's 34 different talent themes, you know, ranging from competition to empathy to, um, you know, there's and, and lots, lots more. And so you take the assessment and you can kind of see you know, where, what's number one and what's number 34, right? And you want to kind of stay, not that the, th the stuff that's like 33 or 34 is a weakness. It's just where you don't get any energy from doing those types of activities. And so we all have those, those types of activities, but at the top of the list are the things that really give you energy. So number one for me is competition, right? And so that was a strength that I was able to use, especially playing baseball and, and sports growing up and, and then, you know, going through the academy and, you know, now in business, like, you know, that's one that I, I kind of knew that I probably had that I was pretty competitive. Um, but there, you know, number one was kind of, uh, you know, reaffirmed that, hey, Scott's competitive, but there were some other ones that I didn't really think about, like futuristic what is was, I think, number three for me. So that's in my top five. Um, and that was like a light bulb moment because I was like, wow, um, this is, seems like a pretty interesting strength. Futuristic. So, um, you know, you know, kind of like an, an, an undeveloped futuristic strength is like you daydream a lot, you know, or you, you're kind of like looking out the window thinking about what's next. Um, but futuristic at, it, at its best is like an imagining an, an outcome and then manifesting that and bringing it to life. And um, it was, so as I was reading through the strengths finder and I saw these different strengths, um, I began to see the ones that I wasn't using, you know, at work or the, they weren't understood or misunderstood by, you know, somebody that didn't have those strengths. And so that's why I'm, I'm, I'm such a, uh, a fan of, of that tool and just self-awareness in general, because, um, you know, you guys each have strengths that maybe the other one doesn't have, but, uh, but just being able to be free to, to do those things that, <laughs> that you do best um, is, is uh, you get, you, you just can get great results that way. So, um, and so I think I, yeah, the more self-aware you are, the more you can focus on what you're good at and then also appreciate what other people are good at and let them, let them, let them do what they are. Yeah. And I think it's important because why I ask a question is I, the best leaders I know are super self-aware. They, they know their strengths. They know their weaknesses. They know where they need to fill the seams. They know how to task people appropriately because they're, they're so conscious of it that they're looking for it in others. And it just is. And, and I think everybody should be very intentional because I, I, I will uh, um, at risk of disagreeing with one of our guests, uh, I will say that I think, when we get older, some people become less self-aware because they're so set in their ways that their self-awareness, like it, it hardens. It's, it's a, it's an, it's a muscle, right? It's an exercise. You have to constantly be willing one to get in the gym, right. To go there. And then two, to do the hard work to develop and, and strengthen it. And what I love is that you, you are so intentional about it, that you created a business around it, two businesses really around, uh, you know, surrounding yourself, sur knowing to surround yourself by people who are quote unquote further or better, whatever that's so, so um, 
you know, that's, that's so just different. subjective, different yeah. is a very self-aware thing to do. Um, so, so I commend you on that. Thank you for, for adding so much value there. And then one question, last question, then we can jump to Stu. Mine's quick. Um, has anybody ever scored a zero of their strength, uh, their strength finder? Because well, sometimes I, it I just comes back. It, no, yeah, so I don't want Stu to be you think discouraged. going to score right? a zero? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think I think sometimes it comes back as like uh, there's an error message every so often, <laughs> and usually it's because the person um, like somebody made them take it. They just went through it as quick as they could and didn't really put any thought into it. And it's basically I think it says like try again, right? <laughs> but uh, that and then that's like ninety nine point nine percent of the time that 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 doesn't happen um well, and now, he's exceptional he's exceptional i think that point one percent could be <laughs> i believe in you Stu. is there is there any type of like like strength that comes up for like little sissy girl or like whiny baby or like squirrel thinker or something like that yeah. i think that there's there's strengths that uh you would associate maybe with with women yeah uh, or, or men, right? But then when a, a, a man has that strength, it's like a great awakening, right? Like, oh my gosh, like this one, you know, I've been misunderstood my entire life because of this. So I'll give you a, a couple examples. So like one's empathy. Like there's guys that have, that are empathetic, right? But you know, we're, my, that's actually one of my wife's top strengths. Um, you know, but for a, a, a guy to have that strength, uh, it's a it's a great strength. Yes, um, do. But if, strength. If, you, if you don't if if uh, but it's associated with a lot of times with with uh, with women. So like for a guy to have that and understand, that, hey, I'm like naturally empathetic, which is a very great thing to be, especially like in sales or customer service or you know as a leader to be able to empathize with with your people. Um, knowing that that's your strength and owning it. I think is really important on the other side of it, of the, uh, the equation. So there's a com command, right? Commands of strength, um, very kind of polarizing. Like I, when I think of Donald Trump, like what his top five strengths are, I mean, I guarantee you one of them's command. And so he can be polarizing, decisive, um, and then, you know, associated with males a lot of the time, but, you know, there's a lot of, of women that, have command as well and so them just owning it like yeah i've got command like this is this is my strength and this is what makes me unique um so they're so they're yeah so i think that that's that's interesting um insight for people when they see their what their top <laughs> strengths are um to just accept them and own them and like yeah this is and and then how can i use use these strengths to get a you know to get results that's good, man. So I'm curious was, you know, as, as uh, SABM has grown and, you know, it really is like this huge uh, networking group, right? And, and, you know, that started with you connecting and networking with people. And I'm just curious, is, is one of those strengths, like in those top five, like a connector, you know, it's like someone that, that connects well with people. Uh, yeah, yeah. So number two is includer. From so my second strength is includer. So like there you go. And so if, so if you look at these businesses in the in the context of talents or talent themes, um, like isn't it cool like that people can take a talent theme that they have and turn it into a business or turn it into you know some sort of a movement or a product? And so that's as looking at it through the entrepreneurial lens, like that's what I always encourage people to do. Is like, hey, if you love history, right? Like creates, then you want to be an entrepreneur, like create a product that has to do with history or, you know, you know what I mean? Or, or find, or, or find a career where you get to, to talk about history, like every day with people. And, and, um, and so includer is, uh, my number two strength. And that was another one, like right there with futuristic where I was like, what's an includer. Right. And I was reading through it and, uh, very accepting of people like, you know, wanting to make the circle wider, right? And so when I think about SABM, you know, we call it a mastermind or that's part of the name, but, you know, which kind of has like an exclus exclusivity to it. Um, you know, I don't even know if that's the right name. Like it's more of a community 
where um, that people can plug into regardless of their their um, where they're at in business if they're just starting out or if they're you know you know multi-million dollar business person um, it's a place you can plug into and and be accepted and and no matter where you're at on your journey there's people that can kind of help you get to the next level so um, and I think that that helps as well as connecting the different academies right so if you think of army versus navy right or you know, Navy versus Air Force, you know, there's these, all these rivalries, but we're all cut from the same cloth. So who, at the end of the day, who really cares, you know, so yeah. bringing, I guess, maybe that strength is help, um, you know, bring the different academy folks together, you know, where, hey, you know, we're all cut from the same cloth. Um, we have, all have that common thread and, you know, we want to want to do well in business. So let's work together and, and help each other. So what's the what's the scale of SA, SABM currently, and what is your vision for the future, and what you want it to become, and kind of where you see it going? Yeah, so I think one thing I learned learned uh, early on uh, when I was throwing a bunch of stuff at the wall and nothing was sticking in my business uh, career, <laughs> uh, I realized that you have to have a niche, right? And um, and so. And, and if you can't easily find who your customers are or where they hang out, um, it's going to be hard to find customers. Or if your message is too, just too broad or too generic, you know, people aren't going to resonate with it. And so, um, and so, you know, I would say I learned that with the strength smugs, you know, like, Hey, there's 20 million people that have taken this thing. I think at the time there was 10 million people that had taken it, but all right, well, 10 million people is my market. You know, it's growing at about, you know, five to 10,000 a day of people taking the Strengths Finder. And I, I went through their coaching program. So I knew where to find people that have taken it, you know, and I was, so my launch for that company was two things, a post in a Facebook group where there was 5,000 Strengths people in it. And so I posted a, a picture of my mug there with a link to the store. And that's where I got my first order from. And then I tweeted <clears throat> a guy um, who was the best-selling author that I knew had taken the Strengths Finder. And I just, you know, put a link to the shop and I knew what his like his number one strength was achiever. And I'm like, hey, like your number one achiever strength will look great on a, on a strengths mug. So I kind of customized it. And he, he like retweeted it to like 200,000 people. And this was like Friday afternoon at four, like five o'clock. That's awesome. You know, so there's no bad time to launch, right? So, um, and so from that, he's still a customer today. So we still get orders when they bring on a new team member um, who takes the Strengths Finder. They order mugs uh, for their team teammates. But you know, from those two things that I did to launch the store, like we got orders that entire first week just from that. And so that, and that's the, that's, that's like having a niche, knowing where your customers are and then creating something that's a little bit different, you know, unique. And so I applied that with, uh, to SABM, you know, I thought about, well, like, who is it that I want to talk to each, every day? You know, like, what are the, what, are, what, you know, what types of people are they and uh, what are their goals? And, and so when I thought about that question, it was, all right, well, you know, I like, talking with academy grads because you kind of cut right to the chase right you don't have to take a year or two to really get to know know them to like trust them i mean it's and so i, I really like that aspect of it and they're all super successful for the most part so um so academy grads and then you know out of that segment i really like the the creative folks like the entrepreneurs the people that are you know kind of creating new things and launching new products and and so that's where um really the idea for sabm came from was you know wanting to serve that very specific purpose um or that very specific person um but i but then i think there comes a day where you start niching out again a little bit um and so you know i guess over the next like we just launched a new program called 10x bets um which is which is uh, gaining a lot of traction that's open to all veterans and, uh, you know, we've built that to about 50 business owners over the last, 
three months. And, and I'm glad it's open to all veterans because we've had, you know, we had an Air Force veteran join about a month and a half ago. And now he has like a leadership role, like in the program. And if, if like it wasn't open to all vets, like he wouldn't be in and, and, and it, he's, he's doing a very important role. So, um, so I think that that's kind of the direction that we're going and David is, and, you know, kind of opening it up and uh, mitching out a little bit. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, I think that it, uh, you know, it being so specific at first, I think that's what, what resonates with people when they see like somebody's class year and like, that's why they listen to the podcast. It's like, Oh, my classmate or, Oh, I want to, you know, and, and that's, what's made it work. So. What's well, is brilliant too. Right. I mean, every year from the Naval Academy, there's 4,000, I'm sorry, there's a thousand grads and I'm sure West Point and Air Force are the same. So you literally have this pool of 3,000 people at some point every year that are coming into it. And, and that's one of the things that Bill talked about is he said, just in our group, our grouping vets, the money is, is infinite. He said it just it is infinite. And it's a, it's a relatively small group percentage wise in the country, 1%. But I think people have these grand visions of what a big business could look like and they, they, they nuke it, right? They get to a point where it's unattainable. Dude, we just are just normal dudes talking to each other about Naval Academy stuff. And I'm throwing in ought twos like we ought to talk about this stuff and seeing how many I can get in there. And <laughs> and and ultimately like, we laugh about that stuff because it's dumb, but it's Naval Academy stuff, right? And and I think there's there's a huge potential there. And it's brilliant. I mean, I I love it. And of course, it's fun to talk to. You know, and you guys played baseball together, so there's all obviously a natural connection there, and that just could branch out and spider web out. Um, just to, it's incredible. So again, I commend you on on just being awesome. Thank you. Thanks, David. Yeah. So, so you started with, um, you know, the you, you did the did you do the podcast first, or did you just kind of start doing some like uh, meetup groups? That was it. Yeah, it was the pod, It was uh, I had yeah Tyler Merritt who started Nine Line Apparel. Yeah. I up like him and then like a couple of my friends <laughs> that I knew would like just want to, would be on the podcast. Right. And that's kind of, so I had three episodes and, um, and I had built, you know, kind of a small email list and I'll tell you what guys, like when, when I've done a lot of stuff that didn't work, when you do something that works, like, you know, right away, it's like instantly, like yeah. strength smugs instantly, like a sales come in, there's engagement. It's like, wow, people, people like this, you know, when, when you do something that doesn't work, it's like, you know, crickets. <laughs> so, so with SABM, it was the podcast and, and, you know, I sent, I emailed out the interview with Tyler Merritt, you know, who started a company at the time it was on the Inc 5,000 list, I think top 20 fastest growing companies, um, it's done a, a, an amazing job and emailed that out. And people were like, oh, like, People were listening to it. I was like, oh my gosh, because I had a podcast before that, which was like nobody listened to it. But I but I learned all the skills. You know, I learned, you know, what mic to buy, you know, how to do it, how to record different parts of it. And I just didn't have a niche. Like I didn't have a topic that anybody cared about and I didn't have a niche. Right. So I went a year with this like other podcast before I just said, you know, I need to take a break, a timeout. And so I took about six months off. And, and went back to the, actually, I just kind of forgot about it. I'm like, you know what? I just want to just forget about this. Um, but then, you know, when you stop doing something that's not working, what, what you realize is like, it, it frees up a lot of energy, like creative energy, a lot of, you know, so it freed up a lot of, a lot of my energy. Um, and, and then I came up with the idea for the, for the service Academy podcast. And, and then, Tell you what, man. Email that out to you know to folks after we uh, we we uh, published it, and I had more downloads on that one episode than I did in a year for with the other podcast. So wow. that's awesome. And that's just the that, and that's the importance of having a niche, you know, doing something that's a little bit different, and um, and then obviously having a good story to somebody's story to share that had a great great uh, success. So. But that's where it started. Yeah, the podcast and then meetups on Zoom, you know, like or it was Google Hangouts. And then we transitioned over to Zoom when Zoom hit the scene. We had been doing meetups for 
I don't know, th three or four years, you know, just, you know, I don't do the, like the networking, like the free ones anymore. Like, but that's what I, where I started just free, like value free, you know, just ways to connect a high, um, you know, high performance community, you know, using technology. And so zoom meetups, podcasting, and, and then, um, you know, and then, so that's kind of where we started. Well, and there's something there, man, like offering value, like that, that, that phrase, like offering value to people is, is what started it all. And, and you continue to offer value, like everything that you're doing in this group is offering value to people. And, and that's huge, man. Like that's, that's such a key, key component to a successful business. Yeah. And not worrying about like what the business, I didn't know what the business model was when I started or if there even was one, I just thought it was fun. It was cool. It was different. Um, you know, created, you know, creating value for people. And then I never, you know, it wasn't until maybe 2018. So a year later that we even had something that people could pay for. Um, so I, I think another good lesson is, you know, just, not to be too quick to charge somebody for something, you know, like if, especially if you're, you're not quite sure of what the model is, um, or if it's just a little, if what you're doing is a little different. So zoom meetups and, you know, podcasts and, and that sort of thing. Um, I think creating value, you know, just getting people engaged and, and then figuring out what they want or, you know, establishing credibility and then, all right, launch a product, launch a service. Uh, but, you know, so, so, Sometimes it's good to start there, like strengths mugs. I didn't give away free mugs, you know, to people, <laughs> you know, I, it's good to like get paying customers as soon as possible. But on the flip side of that, it's okay to also to, to, to give away your, you know, some time and, you know, energy and free resources to folks just to, you know, just to create value and build relationships. And, and then, um, and then you, you never know where that will take you. Well, it's just a smart, a very smart way to go about your networking. It's very intentional, right? You're building the trust. And then once you build the trust uh, and, and things, you know, people are going to want to uh, pay for that value, right? Because it's so valuable. Um, and, I, and I think one thing that folks miss out is that, you know, I'm happy and Stu and I talk about this actually all the time. We're looking for opportunities to partner pe with people that we will pay money to because we want to support their business and the things that their business can add to ours and we can add to theirs. And, and the, the transaction is while there's relationship to that transaction, then there's a lot of a, uh, you know, there's a genuine care that, Hey, I want to support your business. Businesses are there to make money. And, and that networking is such a key part. So there's nothing I love more than partnering with a veteran who's an entrepreneur that can offer a service to, to storehouse free temp potentially if it's a contractor say, and we're like, dude, I'll hire you in a heartbeat. We'll, do you know treat each other well i'll pay you a very good wage and we'll make this thing work together and, and you're, you're building those relationships and i think that's i think that's key um and that kind of goes to my question with with networking is 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 kind of the why behind you know sabm was it i know you said to to surround yourself with people that that uh, offer different perspectives and, and help you grow but but is there is there a bigger why that that we're not tracking in addition to that like is there something that is really just making this thing because you know, people love it, right? They're drawn to it and, and they're, um, you know, I'm, I don't know what your numbers look like as far as your, your growth, you know, every month, year, whatever. But, but from my perspective, what I see on your posts and your newsletters and from the first time, I don't know if you remember, we talked about a year and a half, two years ago, and you were just kind of getting started. And then I, I felt like I blinked and you're like, bam, blowing up SABM everywhere, right? Yeah. Um, so the bigger purpose, I, I don't know. I don't even know if I can, like, I don't know if I have the, the, you know, futuristic is certainly a strength, but I don't, I think sometimes you just don't know, like, and you don't want to even limit yourself to what, what something could be become. I mean, I know that there's a lot of ripples. I know where, you know, people will listen to a podcast episode and, you know, then people will reach out to that guest and then, you know, new values formed or new customers happen or, you know, it's these good things happen. I don't know 99.9% .9 of what happens outside of like, outside of SABM, you know, so, um, and I, 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 so I think at the end of the day, you know, 
it's, you know, kind of going back to like what you're really good at and kind of staying within that zone. Um, so for me, I'm really good at seeing what's the same about people. And so whenever I'm doing that, like connecting like-minded people and the further down I can go down that path, um, the more valuable those experiences that I'm able to create are for folks. Like, so with 10 X bets, I mean, we have, um, it's just organized around a series of, of meetups and meetings. So we've got, you know, a community meeting, but then we have the capital circle, right? And so part of, so the 10 X bets capital circle is for academy grads and vets who are interested in raising capital. So that's what makes, so there's like two similarities there. So they're veterans or academy grads and they're interested in raising capital. Like, so we've niched down twice on those. So like when people go to that meeting, there's trust, you know, there's, you know, like there's high caliber people on the call and it's a lot, it's really valuable for folks. You know, another part of 10X Vets is Actually, uh, in two weeks, we're going to launch a real estate development and construction circle. So that's for people that, you know, have that background that are in real estate development or construction that want to team up on jobs and get better and build their network. And so, again, that's like niching down twice, you know, finding these very specific people. But when you bring them together onto a call or just connect them man, it's so cool to, to see. Like, and I'm not even in real estate development, really. I mean, but I'm, I'll go to the meeting just because I think it's like, I think it's fun. You know, it's like, hey, you know, you know, maybe there's ways that I could help the people there. So, um, so I think just kind of me staying within that zone of connecting like-minded people, you know, even if it's just like a very specific type of person um, creates a lot of value for folks. And so, but I don't, I don't know what the, where that will lead or, I mean, I know, I mean, SABM is only just over three years old, you know, and it's kind of, it has grown a lot over the last three years, but I think it's, I've always just, what it allows me to do is, is to, to, to connect like-minded people in ways that they haven't been connected before. Um, and just and the more that I do that, the better. I, <laughs> I, I, you know, the more, the more valuable the, it becomes. So. Well, just by, just by connecting people, just using that strength that you have just to, to see, just like you're talking about seeing the same and, and, and putting two and two together. Um, you know, it, it's a, it's a form of, of service. It's a form of, of serving to, to help an individual grow. And, you know, I, I'm sure you've seen it where like there's been so many individuals and companies grow because of, of the network and the connection that you're providing. You know, you have, you have like a, a I know you have like a, a real estate um, education platform. You have like a coaching platform, like business coaching platform. You have a jobs platform and you have all these different things that are at the end of the day, you're, you're connecting people and, and you're serving that purpose to Help people get better and grow, and um, and I, I I would I would bet you that there are probably hundreds, if not even maybe thousands, of people that this network you're serving is growing every single day and getting better because of, of what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, thanks, Joe. Yeah, I mean, it's it's um, it's it's a lot of fun, you know, and and um, and I think the other part to it as well is you know you can certainly build a an email list or get a lot of LinkedIn connections or have a podcast. And like, this wouldn't work if I was just selling like me or my like services, right? Like that's, it doesn't work that way. Right. Yeah. And so, um, and so, so having this platform that, you know, even though somebody may do something that competes with maybe one of our programs or whatever, who cares? Like, Come on the podcast, share what it is that that you do, and 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 that's and and then it's just you know and so so I think just having that community aspect to it where it's not about like any one person or you know one person's business or anything like that. It's it's um, the value is in the platform and showcasing the people that are part of the community so that they can you know become better, become stronger, get more customers, you know. And, and connections. So. 
That, that's an you abundant alluded. mindset right there. That's an abundant mindset. It's not easy. I mean, it's, it's, it's not easy, you know, but it, it's, it's, uh, and a lot of people don't, and that, and that's, that's a good, you know, I've had to learn that, right? So being competitive back to strengths finder, right? A lot of things kind of tie into that, but being number one competition, like every strength has, it's like equivalent, like weakness or they call it a base net, right? So somebody that's competitive, oftentimes like that can sometimes lead to a scarcity mindset. Like, oh, there's only one winner, right? And so I've had, I've had to recognize that, hey, I'm competitive, but you know, I'm also inclusive. And so how can we, how can I use those two strengths to create this community where everybody can become better and everybody can win? So, yeah, I, I love that mindset. You know, Stu and I talk quite a bit about mindset, developing a mindset, being intentional, taking action, doing something. And, um, you know, you're, you've epitomized that. Uh, I'm also curious, you know, you mentioned that there may have been some, some, uh, maybe not great successes in the past. Do you mind sharing a couple of those? I don't know if they were products or oh, what yeah. they were. <laughs> so let's see. What, what, let me, let me think back. Um, so, I, so I always saw the, the power in like the online world. And, and so, and, and like, and so I think back in 2010, I started a website called margin of excellence. And so I was going to like teach all these like leadership lessons and stuff. <laughs> But when you think about it, like margin of excellence, okay, it's kind of a crafty name a little bit or whatever, but who's it for? I don't know. People that want to become <laughs> excellent, I guess. Um, and so that was one that um, where I learned a bunch of skills. Like I learned how to build an email list and how to, to do like a, a blog post. And I would, I would email, I made some pretty good connections from it. Like I would email people that, I don't know. I think they were just kind of like wanting to help me out, but they, they had written books or whatever. I'm like, Hey, I'd love to do like, an interview with you. And it was before I ever did a podcast. So I'd like email them questions and then they would fill in the answers. And then I would post them on the, the, uh, the, uh, on the website. Um, so that, that kind of just was a great way to, you know, learn some skills, but I mean, maybe I made a thousand bucks or something from that. Um, and then, there's maybe a few more iterations of that, but the ultimate iteration, at least for today, is the SABM group. Like, so I'm still kind of doing the interviews. You know, I still have the website and still have an email list and that sort of thing. It's just for a very specific audience or, you know, person. And then there's a lot more to it as well. But, um, but that's kind of where it started. But nobody sees that stuff, right? It's like, oh, yeah, you know, he's. You know, he's doing great. He's, doing Look at great. Him. he's a, he's a, he's a one hit wonder. Like he just did. Yeah. And, it, and the reason I asked that question is I really think it's important for our listeners to know that hey, when you're taking action, it's not always home runs. Right. And, and, and failures are not really failures. Even it's only a failure when it stops your progress. You know, you, you try something, it doesn't go exactly as you thought it would. And then you stop. Well, what you're you're highlighting is that there are there's a silver lining to all that stuff. There's there's skills, there's attributes that you took from those experiences that are quote unquote failures that you made a thousand bucks. Um, but but ultimately it was just prepping you. You know, those singles were turning into doubles and turning into triples and and uh, you know, and eventually you're you're hitting home runs and and I think it's important to highlight that action you know, taking steps and it's not always going to be great. And sometimes it's a slog and sometimes it sucks. The margin of excellence, like, you know, yeah. What does that mean? I don't know, but that was a foundational building block for SABM, which is, that's really cool. So thank you for sharing. Yeah. And the other one, I mean, so the, the podcast before the SABM podcast, it was called success start Sunday. Right. So I had this idea. I'm like, all right, every Sunday, like I'm going to like talk about some sort of a success tip and like, I don't know, man, like maybe three people. I think the people that, that there was one person who's, she went to West Point and, you know, she's kind of been supporting me all along, right? There, there's been these people that have come into my life, like that have maybe saw something I was doing. And there was one guy when I first started, like Margin of Excellence, like he went to West Point. So these were the kind of people that like, I was attracting, but I didn't really, I don't know, but I, I kind of figured out, you know, focusing on the service academy uh, audience a little bit later. 
but there was a West Pointer early on that like he would he would like edit my my pod my my blog posts and so I'd write these blog posts and he's like hey man like I'll do this to help you out or for free or whatever and and so like he would edit them and kind of like coach me through, through like making sure they were like clean and, and that sort of thing so and yet you never forget those people you know those people that like even though you know it was like you know what up wasn't that successful at that point um you know so that was of somebody and then you know there was another west pointer they all happen to be west pointers i guess early on yeah what's that, up with uh, that dude but she uh but she would listen to the podcast and the success start sunday one and like respond and she might have been like one of five people that like even listened to it you know or, or, i don't know maybe there's a few more but um but that was again you know those were just things that i did that you know, where I learned the skills that that I'm able to apply today with, um, you know, something that's a little more successful, but I mean, we all kind of got to start somewhere. And, um, and so I think it's important. I'm glad you asked about those, those experiences because it's important for people to know, (laughs) you know, your first real estate deal might not have been, you know, the best one that you ever did. Right. So (laughs) no. Sure unless wasn't. you unless you buy from storehouse three ten ventures then it's gonna be an amazing deal well now yeah so now years later after you've yeah. built your skills and and your network and all of that but um yeah. you know you got to start somewhere and i have, and then, I have four mistakes that i can't get rid of that are uh, four <laughs> houses and uh they continue to hurt my bank every single day <laughs> Right, okay. we won't make those mistakes again. Nope. Yeah, but I'll say without those, though, without those and without my three that I'm currently in daily conversations about <laughs> a, just these deals that we did, without those seven deals, uh, Storehouse 310 wouldn't, probably wouldn't have been born when it was. Not, not probably, it would not have been born when it was because nope. we both had such a horrible experience with yeah. Turnkey at a pain point as, as, uh, as buyers that we're like, dude, we could do this and just and just be like decent human beings yeah. and it'll turn out better. Yeah. So, so, you know, there's a silver lining there too. I mean, I, I, I can't, I don't know what the silver lining to the actual partnership is, but <laughs> like outside of that, like, you know, it's been pretty awesome. You get to talk to me every single day. That's, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. That, that's, that's my point. That's kind of what I'm getting at. <laughs> Yeah, well, imagine, I mean, just imagine if you think about if you didn't have the other person, you know, how limited that would be, you know, and yeah, that's what, I mean, that's something that I learned and, and like, I tried to do things myself for a while, you know, and it's like, it's always better when I've got somebody else that I can brainstorm with that, you know, we can come up with new ideas and it's always been those collaborations where, you know, a product really took off. If it was me, dude, there would be no storehouse retail. Like, I admit that 100% openly and freely. If it was just me, there would be no storehouse retail. I admit that, too. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> I just saw, saw that one coming. Yeah. <laughs> As in, if David wasn't with me, storehouse might still be there. Yeah, no, I got I got what you were saying. Steve. Oh, okay. You were, okay, saying, gotcha. you were acknowledging, you were, you were validating that if it was just me, there would be no business. Thank you for that. <laughs> well, Scott, dude, this has been fun, man. Um, we could probably talk for like another hour, but uh, I think uh, both buildings that David and I are currently uh, in are going to shut down soon. So um, we don't okay. want to get stuck uh, on a military base. Um, but uh, dude, great to see you, man. Um, we might have to have you come back on and talk more shop. This has been good. All right, guys. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing your platform with me and Appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, man. So uh, for those that are listening, you know, go check out uh, SABM Group. Um, We'll put uh, all these links in our our show notes. Reach out to Scott. Scott, what's the best, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Sure. Yeah. So SABMgroup.com. If there's any Strengths Finder fans out there, I know it's uh, coming up on the holiday season. That's, this is kind of our big, big time of the year when people order mug you know strength mugs for for employees and family members that's strengthsmugs.com and then my email address is scott with two t's at sabmgroup.com 
Awesome, dude. Where is just for if people are curious? I, I mean, I personally, pardon my ignorance, I, I had not heard of this particular uh, the Strengths Finder. Is that just an online resource? People go on, they pay for pay for it, and you take a test. Is it free? Like, what's the what's the if people are interested in doing that? What's the uh, specifics? Yep. Yeah. So you just go on to uh, so the Strengths Finder was created by Gallup. And so if you just type in Gallup Strengths Finder, uh, that will take you to the, the link. Um, I guess that they've changed the, they tweaked the name over the last couple of years. It's Clifton Strengths. So if you see that, um, you, you just go there, buy it. I want to say it's like 20 bucks to get your top five strengths. And it's a full report that you get. I mean, it's really, um, I recommend, you know, both you guys take it and kind of compare notes and, and that sort of thing. Have your, if you're married, like have a spouse take it and it's like game changing for a relationship. And then it might be like 40 or 50 bucks to get like all 34 where you can see like one through 34 because there's like some gold nuggets, like in your top 10, like what's number six and seven. Like those are things that you, you also use every day, not just your top five. So it's, I think it's good to get the full report and uh, yeah, just, just for Gallup. Strengths Finder, and uh, it'll take you right to the site. Yeah, and then naturally you follow on with the with a mug and remind yourself every day of your strength. Yeah, it's good stuff. Nice. All right, Jeb. Awesome. All right, well, go uh, go give us a, a five star review. Go share this. Go subscribe to our podcast, and uh, most importantly, go fill your storehouse. Hey, thanks for everything you do, Scott. Thanks for bringing value. Thanks for uh, crushing it. Thanks for SABM and, and just being an awesome uh, honorary OT2 member and make it a great day. All right. Thanks, guys. See you. Good work.